yourselves, guys. Come on, come on. Make some noise. Hell yeah, baby. It's Pete's birthday, y'all. It's the birthday, bitch. What's good, y'all? All right. This is fun. This is a very nice place. It look, this looks like a lot of uh, wedding rehearsals for shotgun weddings have happened here. This is a very nice establishment. This place looks like it runs on bourbon burps and fucking wheat meat sweats. So that's like... <laughs> Grinding. Uh, no, yeah, like Pete said, my name is Aaron. Uh, my mom gave me that name when I was born for a very specific reason, guys. Uh, she would tell me all the time growing up. First two letters of my name are AA. I reminded her of where she should have been the night she made me. You guys all get that. There's not one member of AA in this motherfucker, I bet. Yeah, maybe AARP, possibly. <laughs> Ha ah, yes, right on, absolutely. Reap the benefits, too, what you gotta do. Uh, she had to give me, uh, give me the name with two A's because Plan B wasn't an option back in 92. You guys know what I mean? So my mom had to think on her feet. Uh, it's cool to be here with y'all. Uh, you guys, not gonna lie, I am real hopped up on dispensary weed. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Anybody else, yeah? Anybody else flying high, yeah? You guys get out to the dispensaries ever? No? No? You <laughs> Does everybody buy weed from the same guy? Is <laughs> you guys one weed dealer in West Bend up in here? <laughs> right on. Fuck yeah, dude. Hope the whole town doesn't run dry. Hope nothing happens. Uh, that's cool. I get it, right? Uh, like I, but, you know, whenever, whenever I get to travel to, like, you know, Michigan, Illinois, I like to hit the dispensaries. I like to be able to buy, you know, it's cool that you can buy weed medicinally, recreationally. It's pretty cool. I still find it funny that uh, whenever I buy, make my purchase, I walk out of the dispensary and I look, and on the packaging, they still print that warning label. It's like, warning, do not use while operating a motor vehicle. And I'm like, well, how am I going to know whether it's good or not? Like, <laughs> that's a litmus test for me, man. Like, guys, if I can remember where I'm going, that's mid-grade shit, okay? Like, I want the good stuff, all right? Don't give me three stars, okay? That only gets the chopper chasing me in Grand Theft Auto. That's not what I want. I want to get the army coming after me, dude. Let's go. Let's fucking party. Let's do this, man. Let's operate some heavy machinery, man. Come on. Like, what do you got to do, right? I'm, I'm, I got forklift certification. I stack pallets drunk at work every morning. Like, I don't care. I don't really do that. Uh, you guys will report me for that. That's, that's, that's dangerous. That's an OSHA violation. Uh, I don't take compliments well, you guys. Uh, yeah. you guys take, any of you guys take compliments well? No? No? Pete's dad, do you take uh, compliments well? Is that really your dad at the next table, or did you... Okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if he was just showbiz dad. <laughs> you, you take compliments well, sir? That's... You. Okay, okay. But do you... All right. That, well, then you just answered my question, man. That's good. That's awesome. I can tell that took a lot of growth. That's good. Um, yeah, you're better than I am, man. I don't take compliments well, dude. Uh, this one girl that I was hooking up with for a little while, she gave me this weird compliment, and I still don't know how to take it. Uh, she told me I have a daddy dick. <sighs> yeah, dude, what the, what the fuck? Have you thrown that compliment, miss? <laughs> have you thrown that compliment to somebody? Oh, man. Uh, she told me I have a daddy dick. Uh, in Spanish, it's called a poppycock. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but... Uh, Let's get the stupid ones out of the way, right? <laughs> yeah, she told me I have a daddy dick, and I'm like, that's a lot of responsibility you're putting on me all at once, right? Like, I was not ready for this. I'm not ready at all. I'm very immature. You know, like, I don't even have the right attire. I don't even own a robe, you know what I mean? Which is the right attire if you're going to have dad dick, right? All right, somebody else in here saw their father's penis. It wasn't <laughs> when they were growing up. Not just me. Cool, fine. Finally, good. Origin story. <laughs> No, that couldn't be anything further from the truth, man. I don't have a daddy dick. I don't come when I have sex, okay? It's a big fucking problem for me, man. Anatomically speaking, it is. Yeah, because I take antidepressants. Any other sad baddies up in here? Anybody else? Yeah? All oh, right. Hell yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. You guys neurotypical folk in West Bend. That's good. I like that. You guys, <laughs> you guys are a tough, grizzled bunch. But no, I take... Uh, I take antidepressants. I take what are called SSRIs. If you guys don't know what that stands for, it stands for semen subtracting rage increasers. <laughs> and they're working, okay? I'll tell you that. But uh, I'm not sad about it, so they're really working. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're a two-pump chump and you're bummed out about it, talk to your doctor about Will Butrin today, son. <laughs> tell him I sent you. You know, they give me 20 bucks whenever I plug them. Uh, <laughs> I got to work for it a little bit. Uh, 
No, yeah, guys, I'm a heavily medicated person. They got me on everything. They got me on uppers, downers, all arounders. Uh, they got me on who's it's, what's it's, flim flams, ding dongs, and green eggs and ham. You know what I mean? Like, got me on a lot of stuff. <laughs> they got me on one fish. Uh, now they got me on a two fish, red and blue. You know? <laughs> okay, that's that's what the dumb fucking thing I'm gonna say all night. Uh, what else we got here? Um, a little bit about me, y'all. I uh, I. It's Pete's 40th birthday, which makes some noise for the birthday boy. One more time. It's his 40th birthday. He's looking great for 40, I'll tell you that much. And I feel like I can say that because I turned 30 and I got a lot of corrections I got to make in these next couple of years in my life. Tell you that much. I didn't take care of myself for my whole 20s, right? Uh, so like I've got some backtracking to do. My friend uh, back in Milwaukee is a yoga instructor, certified yoga teacher. And they invited me to take one of their walking classes. And I was like, yeah, I feel like, you know, I could, you know, jump, you know, get more in tune body and mind and something like, I don't know. I found out yoga really wasn't for me. I kind of knew that about myself, but I did finally use my yoga mat for its main purpose. And I feel like that was a win. Okay. Because up until that point, I had just used it to, uh, to get way too stoned and reenact scenes from Aladdin. And that is, <laughs> that is not the primary function for that device, you guys. <laughs> yeah. And when I say that, I mean I'd smoke way too much Afghan Kush and then tiptoe around my apartment and get freaked out by all my lamps. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. You start yelling at the cat. And you're like, I don't, just don't touch anything, dude. Like the house might come alive and try to eat us or something like that. I'm a lot of milligrams deep. Just be fucking cool, okay? Uh, I think that makes me a rookie in the yoga game, right? I don't know. My friends stop me on the way out. They're like, that's pretty good for your first try. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed. They're like, oh, don't be embarrassed, you know? Everybody's bad their first try. Keep coming out. Don't get discouraged. Who knows? Maybe in six months, you can be just like me. You can be a certified yogi. I was like, no offense, but you're more like a Paddington, okay? Like, <laughs> like maybe you're a Berenstain on your best day, you know? Like when you wake up, look in the bathroom mirror, and you're like, I'm bringing the A game today, baby. But I feel like honesty is really important. I worked really hard on that joke, you guys. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you guys be shocked and sad to know how much brain power into that, 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 that fucking joke, dude. Uh, it's one of my favorites to tell. It's like audience research for me. I get to find out who amongst you guys was read books as a child. So I uh, get to have a little fun up here, too. Uh, well, a little bit more about me. I got kicked out of Boy Scouts when I was nine. And you guys look at me and you're like, yeah, you don't look like a do-gooder. Like, you make it all the way. Okay, yeah, I'm not. I, I knew that about myself. And... Uh, you know, but my friends would talk about how much fun they'd have in the Scouts, right? Growing up, they'd go on these, like, wilderness trips, learn survival skills, do good deeds, and earn badges for them. And that all sounded, like, fun to me, but we didn't do anything like that in my Scout troop. We just went to the chapter meetings and then just made really, really bad arts and crafts, okay? Yeah. I'll have you guys know, for six weeks straight, they had us making birdhouses, okay? For a month and a half, dude, and, like... And not like we were each working on one, like a six-week-long project. They had us cranking out a quota of these motherfuckers. And I was, I was the only one who was, like, brave enough to raise her hand in the back. I was like, hey, uh, you know they do this themselves, right? I don't know. It's kind of their thing, right? I don't know. Not good biology programs around here, you guys. <laughs> it's kind of their thing, right? I don't know. I was like, what the fuck, dude? It's like, what is this? Is this... What is this weird boot camp with arts and crafts you guys have us going to right now? Like, what is it? Like, do I have to get on the phone and call OSHA uh, again? Again? I'll call them. I will. Do what I got to do. Like, what is this? Is this like the military? Am I in, like, like boot camp? Like, some, in some sort of, like, Stanley Kubrick film or whatever I'm not aware of? Like, are we going to be lying in our bunks pretty soon saying some stupid creed? Are we going to be like, this is my birdhouse. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My birdhouse is my best friend. It is my life. Without me, my birdhouse is useless. Without my birdhouse, I am useless. I must build my birdhouse true. I must build sturdier than Troop 242 who is trying to outdo me. I will. By God, I swear by this creed. Did you mean something like that? <laughs> is that what you meant? Yeah, is that what you meant, Scout Master Dave? No, they asked me... They kicked me out for asking too many questions. I got dishonorably discharged from the Boy Scouts of America, you guys. Oh, man. Let's get to know you guys a little bit more. We got any couples up front? You guys? You guys, uh, you guys a couple up front? No? Uh, come, come on, man. You, you got, if, you got, if you're his mistress, then you just outed yourself. You guys are having a little PDA action up front. That's good. How long have you guys been together? A few years. A few years? Okay. <laughs> just like, yeah, okay. You guys are at that point where you're like, I don't fucking number. Throw a number. Like, <laughs> 
That's cool. That's great. I'm glad for y'all. And you guys, okay, I can tell you guys are at that point because you guys sit up front at comedy shows and you're like, yeah, what the fuck are you going to do to us, man? Like, we've been through it all. A couple of revolutions around the sun, right? Yeah, I can tell the passion. You guys are, hey, you guys are still holding hands a couple of years in. That's good. The passion is still alive, right? Yeah, yeah. He's sending pictures of his penis later on tonight, maybe, right? Yeah. Aren't you, big dog? Yes, you are. Yes, you are, dude. Wow. wow. Shit. Panoramic shots. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Panoramic shots, if you will. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's grown now. Yeah. Big groaner. Uh, fuck. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm glad for you guys, right? And he's probably at that point where he, she doesn't even have to ask, you know? You just, like, you just send him out, right? I don't know. I'm in a relationship now, and I'm glad I am, because single dudes right now, man, you guys are, you guys are acting up. You guys need to fucking chill, okay? <laughs> Sending unsolicited dick pics. Like, what is that for? <laughs> like, yeah. And did you guys know that like, there, there's a deeper-seated issue? I don't know if you guys are aware of. There's guys out here sending unsolicited dick videos. What the fuck is all that about? Who's getting, like, multimedia elements incorporated into this shit, right? What is that? Like, what, they're sending, like, POV shots of them, like, laying in their bed, turning the camera, put it on their feet, you know, or something? And then all of a sudden, a cloud of vape smoke comes into frame or something like that? Yeah, and then they wave it away, and there's your penis. It's like, what are you doing, dude? Like, come on, they're, like, fucking chill, all right? Uh, nobody wants to see that anymore, okay? Nobody wants to see your weird wiener or sleight of hand magic, all right, dude? Like, nobody wants to see that anymore. Yeah, like I said, I'm 30, so like I was, uh, I was going to high school in mid 2000s, early days of sexting, right? So like, camera phones not a big mainstream thing back then. So as a guy, you still had to use your words to get what you wanted from a lady, and I like that. I like that. I was up to the challenge. I did improv and stuff in high school, and it was a good chance for me to practice, right? I get a girl's number, and she texts me something flirty. She'd be like. Well, I'll get you alone in a room, and then I'll show you my boobs. <laughs> I wasn't talking to real winners in high school, guys. Uh, <laughs> not the real cream of the crop. <laughs> now she texts me something flirty, and you're like, I'll show you my boobs. And I was like, ha ha, uh, yes, and? Um, which is very good improv. I don't know if you guys have ever taken a class before, but that's the first rule. Got it right out of the way. Give you a little freebie there. Okay. I see a couple of guys in here, my generation. Uh, a couple of people in here remember pre-coming to a winky face like I do. You guys remember that innocent time of your life? Fucking two punctuation marks to get you to the top of the hill every time? <laughs> Didn't even have emojis back then, right? So, like, eggplants were just eggplants, right? <laughs> it's a very innocent time in the world. I want to go back to that time. Um, all right. Uh, it's the weekend. You guys happy it's Saturday night? Make some noise, you guys. Yeah? Hell yeah. All right. You, yeah, celebrate? Right on. All right. Oh, okay, well, you know what you're here for. That's, <laughs> that's cool. But, it, okay, so other than, you know, checking out the comedy show, uh, Pete's birthday celebration, anybody up in here because they hate their job? Anybody? Come on. Anybody willing to admit? Next to you hate your job, guys? Yeah? Okay, we got a handful of honest people. Everybody else living their best life. That's fine. That's cool. Right on. I don't know, maybe you, guys, maybe you guys don't remember that part of your life, okay? Let's let everybody play along, okay? Make some noise if you guys have ever had a shitty, soul-crushing job that you hated. Make some noise if you guys ever had a shitty job that you hate. Right on. That's good. Okay. That's just about everybody. Just about everybody. So we have outed the one percenters in the room, you guys. We have found the generational wealth, okay? Fucking get them after the show. <laughs> get them for all they got. <laughs> uh, no, that's cool. Uh couple of people, you guys, oh, okay, you guys, <laughs> you guys cried in walking coolers like I did, right? <laughs> you guys did that back in the day, yeah? yeah? I'll tell you what, I did that today, okay, guys? <laughs> so I, I cried in a walking cooler, and here's the thing, I don't even work service industry anymore, okay? Yeah, that's just how I get psyched for comedy shows and shit, you know? I just cry, vape, and punch things, you know? Right? <laughs> that's the three stages of grief of service industry, I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, I worked some shitty jobs in my day, dude. Uh, my least favorite thing about working is like office culture, you know, like corporate culture. Like not my da not my jam, you know. Like doing team building exercises with your coworkers. Like no, <laughs> no thanks. Nah, man. Like that's weird. What? Somebody tosses you a red rubber ball and then you gotta tell them a secret about yourself. <laughs> it's like it's like, dude, we work at Target. Like, come on, this doesn't this doesn't matter. Like, come on, Todd. I told you everything about me at the last company bonfire, dude. Like. <laughs> We're fucking cool, right? I was on your Christmas card list this year. Why are we doing this right now? Why are we fucking playing The Floor is Lava? I don't want to do this. Like, what? Like, I don't know. Do you guys think terrorists do the same thing, though? No? <laughs> I feel like they might have to, right? 
they're going to be on the same page. They've got to do some team building exercises every now and again, or as I like to call them, ISIS breakers. <laughs> All right, just like, hit, the, hit the back. <laughs> yeah, I think they're out there playing a little game of two truths and a lie. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, okay, you guys know a lie is the only truth, right? Come on, we already knew that, right? <laughs> All right. It's good to know that jokes like that can fly in here, okay? I can just bomb instead. That's what they can do. That's fine. Yeah, you guys better strap in because I got 72 more of them shits for you. No, I don't. That's not true. That's not true at all. Uh, you guys, my girlfriend and I were big into watching this show on Netflix called uh, Love on the Spectrum. Anybody else ever see the show Love on the Spectrum? Right on. Cool. It's a pretty positive, uplifting show if you guys haven't seen it. It's a documentary show about people uh, who are diagnosed with autism, and the Netflix cast and crew helps them navigate the dating game a little bit. Uh, and it's based in Australia, or like the good season is based in Australia, and I think that's the right country to tackle autism, okay? They tackle that shit in the most Australian way possible. Very positive, very uplifting show. Everybody who's on the show gets on the screen and they're like, Oi, oi, you got autism? Well, that's all right. That's okay. To be autistic? You know? I'm just like, oh, what? You don't make good eye contact? That's okay. You don't make good eye contact? You don't think you could go on dates? Oh, no, no, no. This lady's so Australian that her baby ate a dingo. Do you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, God damn it. I wouldn't want like a. I wouldn't want an Australian doctor giving me bad news, right? I wouldn't want to get that diagnosis. Doctor walks in with some charts and he's like, "Oh, I got. I don't want to tell you this, but you got AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> you got AIDS probably from fucking." I'm like, "Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> fucking hell!" He's like, "What do you want to do?" I'm like, "I don't know, Doctor Joey. <laughs> I'm like, what do, you, what do we do here? Do we prep the big knife, or the big knife for surgery or something like that? Like, what are we doing right here, man?" Uh, got a couple more for y'all. Uh, like I said, I'm from Milwaukee. Um, you guys drinking tonight? You guys big drinkers out here at the pit? Yeah, right on. Fuck yeah, like that. I can feel the I can feel the Scotty energy up in this piece real well. That's good. I like being from Wisconsin, man. I feel like uh, uh, I feel like you know drinking is such a big part of our culture in the state of Wisconsin that if prohibition comes back again, we're dude, we're fucked, right? Are we? We're so screwed. Especially, like, for me back home in Milwaukee, man. Like, we're gonna... We're done though. We're done. We're gonna fucking need Al Capone a cheese curd country to bail us out of this shit. You know what I mean? I like, uh, I like day drinking. You guys like day drinking? You guys... Yeah? We got some darty ears in the house? Some darty animals? That's what's up. I like day drinking. Uh, I got some friends that live in Chicago. They invited me to go day drinking. Uh, for the big St. Paddy's like parade, you know, where they like dye the river green or whatever, and they like made it out to be some big deal, and I was like, yeah, I don't care, whatever. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, come on, like, come on, dude, like, blacking out in public in the middle of the day—that's our shit. Come on, what are you guys doing over here? Come on, don't come from my culture like that. Come on, dog. You know what I mean? Because like, especially in Milwaukee, like, we got the brewery tours, right? You know, it's like the brewery district, right? It's awesome. You can hit, like, three brewery tours all within the same Saturday morning, all within, like, a couple of blocks from each other. It's a pretty good deal, dude. You know? I like it. Uh, you go in, you skip the tour because you can Google all that shit, right? <laughs> Come on. We got big stuff to do today. We got big plans, you know? You skip the tour, walk straight into the tap room, and get faded on nine IPAs for $40. Come on, night. That's a good deal, right? That's how that's, I love them. That's why I love my city, dude. I'll tell you that. Milwaukee's got my heart and my liver from here on out. I'll tell you guys what. Because <laughs> uh, my friends down in Chicago, they're like, oh, they're, you know, like, they're trying to play it up big. They're like, oh, well, we dye our river green. Yeah, and that's how we celebrate. And in Milwaukee, we're like, yeah, ours just kind of looks like that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And guess what? We still jumped in it to celebrate an NBA championship, okay? Yeah, bucks and six, bitch. Uh, <laughs> i will do one more and get out of here, y'all. Bring it up for your next couple of comics. Um... Like I said, I did have some shitty jobs in my, in my day, in my days in the workforce. I used to be a Lyft driver, though. I actually like that job. I like being a Lyft driver. Uh, it taught me a lot of good things. It taught me a lot of, uh, you know, like cold, hard facts of life. Uh, like Pete was saying, he was talking about, you know, that old saying, what goes, around, what goes around comes around. And I'll tell you what, that is absolutely true. 
That is 100% true, you guys. If you guys put good energy out into the world, if you guys pay it forward, that's going to come back to you. And it's going to come back to you in a big way. And I learned that driving for Lyft because on a Monday, I drove this couple to go purchase cocaine. And then on a Friday, I was offered two bumps of cocaine by one of my passengers. Like, holy shit, that is the world smiling down on you, right? Yeah. That's like, I, I, I got to feel, that's probably why Lyft costs more, right? Like, Lyft, right? Like, like Uber was the more expensive thing until the pandemic. I feel like that's, I, I feel like I might be onto something there. I don't know. I like, I like driving for, uh, this is a good time. Uh, yeah, I liked, uh, I liked, I liked all my passengers. My guy from uh, Mequon, my dude Ben from Mequon. If you guys could ever encounter such a man who gave me the bumps of cocaine, he's a good dude. Uh, yeah, he's good. I liked it a lot. Um, no, I, I like to do a little extra service, you know, for the, my passengers, right? Like that couple I drove, uh, you know, to, to, to buy, to make their purchase. I was a little worried, a little concerned, you know. So I did, out of the goodness of my heart, I gave them a ride back. And you know, they're in the back seat and they're like, hey, do you mind if we rip lines back here? And I'm like, no, do you mind that I don't have power steering? Uh, <laughs> so we're at a gentleman's agreement, a little bit of a stalemate here, <laughs> unspoken. Uh, no, I, uh, I was driving Ben home, it was like 2.30, 3 in the morning, I got like a block and a half away from his place and I hit a speed bump and he was like, hey, you hit a bump. Oh, huh? Yeah? You wanna hit a bump? And I was like, yeah, dude, I'm just glad I didn't hit a horse, okay? <laughs> Let alone that bunch of pet rocks. All right, my name's Aaron Clark, you guys. Give it up for yourselves, have a great rest of your day.